What's up guys, we are back with another Power Rangers Lightning Collection review, taking a look at, well, once it got announced, probably my most anticipated figure in this line for the entire year, because we are finally getting into the realm of Power Rangers stuff that I have just been dying for for so, so long, long before the Lightning Collection ever came about. We're taking a look at our first monster. We're taking a look at Pumpkin Wrapper, and this is easily one of my most wanted monsters for a number of reasons. I mean, it's a goofy villain, it's a pumpkin guy, it's orange, so yeah, I'm very much on board. We've got him here in a familiar style package for the line, but it's just a larger format, so it's kind of a double wide uh, box for the line. Same kind of style, though. Figure in the window, you've got that Tom Whalen artwork down in the corner and on the side panels, and then the back of the box has got that kind of render style shot of the figure with all of his accessories in view. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, the very long awaited, well, at least for me, and I'm sure for other folks as well, Pumpkin Wrapper. So I'm just hopeful that this guy and, of course, King Sphinx are the beginnings of something very, very special when it comes to Lightning Collection, where we can get the Monsters of the Week kind of villains that we really haven't seen from Power Rangers in a very, very long time in, in the toy lines. And just for them to be in this line is, is very exciting. So this guy in particular is, I mean, he's amongst one of my most anticipated, most wanted Power Ranger things in general, because he never had a toy uh, in the vintage line. And I just really like the design. It's a goofy scarecrow man covered in vines with an upside down jack-o'-lantern. What's not to love? So let's get started. See what this guy can do. See how he moves around. He is very, very par for the course when it comes to lightning collection, save for the head. So he's he's larger, but he still has all of the same stuff we expect to see on a Power Ranger. And then he has this big noggin. So you've got a big jack-o'-lantern, obviously, that sits on a ball peg. So he can rotate all the way around. You do have some tilt side to side, and then you have a little bit up and a little bit down, but not enough to really do a whole lot with. So that's kind of the big limiting factor with this guy, is just he has a big pumpkin for a head. Arms go out at the shoulders. They do go up and down as far as swiveling. Uh, you'd have to worry about the collar, so they only go so far, but it's generally more than enough. And then you've got your butterfly joint. We do have a bicep swivel in there. You've got your double jointed elbows, as well as hinges and rotation at the wrist. You've got your diaphragm cut like we see on all the Rangers with the ab crunch. So he goes forward and then he goes backwards and it is ratcheted and I think it's quite necessary. So I'm glad they did it because if anything, the one thing you might have to worry about with this guy is stability because he is, he's top heavy, obviously. I think the head weighs as much as the rest of the figure. So he's not like he's going to go toppling all over the place, but it is something you might have to take into consideration. But this ratchet does help keep him sort of locked in once you've got him into one of those detents. So I do like that. Legs go out about that far. They kick forward all the way. They kick backwards a little bit. You do have your thigh cut. We've got double jointed knees. And then you've got your boot cut shin swivel. You've also got rocker and really, really good uh, hinges down at those ankles. So like I said, he is very much something familiar when it comes to this line. He's just bigger and not a ranger, but he has all the normal body style articulation. The only real difference is that you've got to worry about that collar and the massive, massive head. But I don't really fault him for that because that's just what he is. Now, when it comes to the overall look and feel here, this is mostly my main draw for this figure because I just like this design. I really like the idea of this character, the stupid stuff he does in this show, all the stuff he comes with to really kind of beef all of that up and really display his power set. I just like this guy, and it's so exciting to finally have him. I don't think he's a perfect figure, but for the most part, I think they did a pretty solid job. So, to start with, he is kind of basic when it comes to his overall design. He's just sort of like, you know, a scarecrow pumpkin man, really. And it works well. The sculpt all over him is really nicely done. You've got, uh, the, of course, the big collar up here, the big vine collar that sits on him. This is a separate piece that sits, uh, sits over top of the buck and then sits kind of locked down by the head. There's some nice detail as far as the sculpt goes with some haphazard shading all over it. It's not the greatest, but it is there. You do have your vine shoulder pads as well. He's got sort of the uh, stitching that runs up and down. I do think there should be a little darkness in there, maybe some black behind those uh, green stitches just to bring it out a little bit more. I do think that's what it was in the show as well. And then you've got some green down here on the knees, which is also accurate to the show with his uh, really well sculpted boots. I do like these. They don't have any paint on them to speak of, but they do look really good. Uh, I just in general like the design of this, of this guy, and it translates 
fits into figure form really well. I mean, it's a goofy thing when you think about it, but it works as far as like a monster and as far as this sort of just over the top kind of villain that could be thrown on your Power Rangers shelf. He is quite large and we are going to do some size comparisons because that's a big, big key thing when it comes to this uh, little deluxe monster subline is their height and their overall uh, scale compared to Rangers and then some of the other figures. So we will talk about that. But I'd say the one major thing to talk about is, of course, the head sculpt, the paint, what they did or maybe didn't do up top. But overall, I do think they went in the right direction with this guy. So sculpt-wise, I do think they pretty well nailed the head. It's a really nasty-looking jack-o'-lantern type of thing. So you've got a very telltale pumpkin design with all of those, uh, you know, segmented sections there with a lot of wash on it. And it does have a lot of paint on it. Honestly, there's not a lack of paint when it comes to this head sculpt. What really kind of is throwing folks off, I think, is the mouth and the eye sockets because he's often depicted in... Um, certain images as having a lot of darkness in there and it's not really that it's black it's it's a lot of shadow uh, he's actually even got full black on the artwork for the box and that's not how he is in the show but he does have a lot of dark areas on his head because of how recessed this stuff is so the mouth is open and gaping so it has shadow in there the eye is a big socket and it has shadow in there he doesn't have that here i do think a quick wash will probably fix this problem so I'm likely going to try that. I think it'll help bring out some of that sculpt. The uh, the wash that is on there is kind of like a brown gray. So it gives you the, the idea that it's sort of like just pulled out of the pumpkin patch. You know, when you go get a pumpkin, it's got dirt on it. And that's really what this is. Uh, I don't think it's one to really bring out any kind of shadow or anything like that. We need some more stuff in the eye sockets and then in that mouth in particular. I think he would look a lot better, not if it was fully blacked out necessarily, but if at least there was a, something a little bit darker than sort of this gray color, definitely some black of some kind. Other than that, I do think the sculpt is really well done. So the sculpt is 100% there. Uh, you can certainly touch this up a little bit. Obviously, we probably shouldn't have to, but at the same time, I think it's going to be a bit of an easy fix if you want to do it. And then the one eye that he has, you do have that yellow ring around there. So there is a uh, that little call to detail as well. So it's not the best when it comes to paint applications, but I think the sculpt is absolutely stellar here. It's a, it's a massive, massive head that has a ton, a ton of detail crammed into it. Now, as far as size comparisons go, I figure the best things we can talk about are a Ranger and Goldar because, well, this guy is massive. He is about eight inches tall, roughly, and you can see that he definitely towers over the Power Rangers. He still very much towers over Goldar, too. I kind of wonder if they're going to give us a deluxe Goldar at some point because, frankly, after seeing these two, this guy, and then, of course, King Sphinx, Goldar seems to be a little on the small side. I'd like to have a have a bit of a bigger one, but that's a different story. So you've got this guy as your sort of baseline for what some of these larger deluxe monsters are going to be. And I think they really hit a good sizing when it comes to these figures. He has a lot of size over the Rangers. He still has size over Goldar. But when it comes to it, this is what matters most. And he definitely has that monster of the week feel where they all were at least a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier. And it just sort of just sort of works out really well here. Uh, now some, as far as some other lines, let's pull Goldar aside. Uh, just as usual, here he is with uh, Beskar Mando. And then let's do, I don't know, something else. Some random stuff that's sitting around right now. So here he is with a NECA foot soldier. So a seven inch style figure. So you can see that he definitely sort of still towers over that. Uh, let's do another NECA just because we've got something a little bit beefier. So here he is with, uh, with Rocksteady. So give you an idea of that. And then for a couple other six inch style figures, here we go with, uh, let's do Cobra Commander from Classified. And then how about, how about a Hellfire Guard for sort of a standard Bucky Cap style Marvel Legends. So you can see this guy definitely has a lot of plastic. You are getting a much bigger figure for your uh, $30 price point. So there is no lack of plastic when it comes to this figure. And again, I think they have absolutely hit the sweet spot when it comes to scaling to the other Power Ranger figures. Now, as far as accessories goes, this is another area where I think they've absolutely killed it because especially in comparison to King Sphinx, which we still haven't gotten to yet as of this review, this figure is absolutely stacked with accessories. He comes with so much stuff. Uh, basically, they gave you everything you really needed to display Pumpkin Rapper's power set. So to start with, we've got a couple extra hands. Let me get these out of the way, really. You've got a right uh, style pose hand. 
and then you've got a left uh, fist here. So two extra hands to supplement the uh, the gripping style hands that he comes with in the box. We've got a couple of vine whips. So you've got sort of just the standard one, the little small vine whip here, just done up in green plastic so it matches the coloring of his, uh, of his collar. And then of course the vine that's coming down. So it's got a little bit of a loop at the end, but it's just a small, uh, if you want to have him just have one on display at all times, this is probably what you'd want to go with. And then you've got the vine lasso here. So this of course is a much larger piece. It's got the, the hoop on the end so you can wrap it around a ranger and have him reel someone in. You've got an energy effect because of course that is uh, one of the, the hallmarks of this line. So this one you can wrap around his hand and you can put it, you know, maybe around a ranger in some fashion or you can put one of his pumpkins inside. So you've got something like this. So you've got this big green energy effect with a pumpkin in it. And he does come with three of these. So you've got three of these. And if you recall from the show, these are very much for a specific thing. These are to go on heads and they can they go on the Power Ranger heads or they go on a putty's head. So you can take the head off of your figures, pop on a a pumpkin head there and you have what makes for a reason for me to get three more putties which as much as I don't want to say that I feel like I need more putties now just to be able to utilize this I don't see myself displaying the Rangers with these on them but I would definitely display three pumpkin putties alongside this guy so I think they absolutely killed it with these. The sculpt on these pumpkins is really well done. It's got the same kind of coloration as this guy's head does, which works really well when it comes to just the pumpkins themselves. And then he comes with two whips. You've got the energy effect and two extra hands. So for, again, for a $30 price point, this thing is absolutely loaded with a bunch of good stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much over the moon with this guy. He does have a couple issues and they're, they're minor to me, honestly. The head neck articulation is limited, but it's not really a problem. It's just sort of a byproduct of the design. The only true problem is that they definitely should have put some sort of a darker wash on the face, the mouth and the eye sockets in particular. I don't need black voids in there, but some extra little black detail I think would have gone a little bit further to accentuate that and just make the face pop in comparison to the rest of the, the pumpkin meat, I suppose. Otherwise, I think they absolutely killed it with this guy. Again, I have really been wanting this figure for whatever reason for a very, very long time, and I think Hasbro did a really good job. He's loaded with a lot of cool accessories, so much to the, to the point where I want to buy more putties now just to be able to display those pumpkins. So yeah, they, they've definitely gotten me uh, when it comes to doing these monsters. If they can churn them out like this, then I am so on board for just about anything they can throw at me. So that's going to do it for this look at the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Pumpkin Wrapper. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.